All right, guys. So in the last video, I went over how to remove the injectors in a common rail of 5.9 Cummins. Um, I said that this applied to, for sure, 04 and a half. I'm going to say up to 07. Um, and it's probably going to be the same procedure for the uh, 03 and early 04 and a half, or the early 04, sorry. Um, so what I have here, I have the, all of the injectors are loosened and just ready to be plucked out of there. No, I take that back, sorry. The number one injector is loosened and ready to be plucked out of there. That's where I stopped with the last video. Uh, some things that you're going to need on this, the tools that you're going to need to go back and reinstall your injectors, you're going to need a quarter inch torque wrench or one that does inch pounds. I just prefer the quarter inch. Uh, you'll need a half inch torque wrench or something that measures foot pounds. Um, you'll need a 15 16 socket for your half inch torque wrench. Um, you'll need a 8 millimeter socket for your quarter inch torque wrench. Um, you'll need a um, 10 mil socket. And um, I think that's basically it. So on the reinstall, it's really not that bad. I'm going to go ahead and loosen all of these injectors, get them plucked out of there, and then I'm going to show you all how to reinstall the first one, and the rest of them are the same procedure. Um, I take mine and I engrave on them. This is my new set of uh, Dynamite Diesel 30 Overs. I go in and I engrave all of them and put them in that bore. I also did connector tubes this time. I'm going to, if you watched the last video, um, I explained that I have... I'm going to send off the set of injectors that's in the truck to have them tested and repaired and I'm going to put them back on the shelf when they come back and then if these ever start going bad then I can just keep swapping them out so I've got a set of connector tubes that match up to each one of them the reason it matters is because the uh, connector tube goes in that hole and that right there is what mates up to it so it's a mechanical seal that's on there metal on metal seal and I'm just kind of picky about making sure that my stuff seals off good so that's why I do connector tubes with each set of injectors. Um, I have replaced connector tubes each time I did injectors, but now I'm more to the point where I'm just going to get a set of connector tubes for each set of injectors, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pop all of those out of there and uh, get them ready to go. And uh, we'll be rocking and rolling. All right, so all of the... Uh Injectors are out now. You got the connector tubes, just stick them back in the tubes and numbered them. I'm going to engrave them later. So now it's time to get down to actually installing the injectors. And this process is, like I said in the last video from that I did yesterday evening, tearing this thing apart. This is one of the most vital parts of it. We're going to go over some stuff while we're in here about um, if you're having injector failing symptoms. If you didn't watch the other video, because um, you're like, well, I know how to pull injectors out. All right, cool. Um, that's fine. But if you didn't watch it, some of your failing injector symptoms are um, slower start, takes more revolutions for it to actually fire up, a puff of white smoke when it first starts, and even sometimes until it warms up, um, fuel tick, fuel knock. Usually at higher speed, well, I say usually at higher speeds, it's more noticeable when you're when you're revving the engine. Um, that's when it's more noticeable. Um, also, uh, the wait start light will come on and it'll ding at you <coughs> when you're going higher RPMs, usually highway speeds. Um, and one thing that I forgot to mention yesterday, that's another symptom of failing injectors, or it could just be something simple is if you have a monitor where you can watch your fuel pressure, your fuel rail pressure, if you're not hitting the desired pressure mark, it could be a symptom of failing injectors or it could be a symptom of your injector tubes or something is not properly installed. So uh, rail pressure can be anywhere, I mean, it, it could be tens of thousands of PSI. It could be 20 to 30,000 PSI, depending on your tuning, RPMs, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, quite simply, the way that a diesel engine works um, is when the piston comes up and it hits the right point on these common rails, it's all timed electronically. So as I said yesterday, this whole fuel rail assembly right here, all the way up to the injector bodies, is 
pressurized at all times when the engine is turning. So if you're starting it, even if you're hitting the starter, it's pressurized. If that injection pump is turning, it's all pressurized. So um, all of these is controlled by electronically timing. As the cylinder comes up, it hits the right spot. The injector will pop off with, uh, and it's usually they're running in great excess of 20,000 PSI, depending on your tuning, like I said it will pop that injector open and it will spray that fine mist of diesel in there as it comes up it's already got air in there and it compresses it so far so hard that it explodes and ignites diesels are literally made on compression and compression equals torque in a very very simple sense that's why diesels make so much more torque um, so if your connector tubes aren't seated properly on your injectors they can leak by and feed your, well, it can get in your crankcase, or it can leak by and it can go back through the return fuel line, or through the return fuel in the head. Um, and that can cause you a rail bleed. If your injectors are failing and the, the plunger on the injector in there isn't holding tight, then that could be allowing fuel to leak into the cylinder, and that causes white smoke when you're, when you're running because you collect that little bit of fuel on the cylinder before it's ready to fire. So it's already got that little bit of extra fuel on there and it's unburnt when it goes out the exhaust. That's what causes it to smoke. Um, so that can be an issue with uh, rail pressure loss. Um, and the, the only way really, so there's a simple way to test these injectors. If you, if you have one injector that you think is, you can tell something's not quite right, but it's not quite a consistent sound. You can go in and you can follow the steps in the uninstallation instructions and you can unplug one injector at a time and see if the knock goes away. What you're doing is you're disabling that electric solenoid so that you're only running on the other five cylinders. And if you find one that sounds different with the injector unplugged, you found your problem. And that's probably just going to be a failing solenoid. However, if your seals are shot and they're not sealing off, you can unplug it all day long, but it's still going to be leaking fuel by on that plunger. So um, the way to test that is you've got to get a, a plug to put on your fuel rail, block that, that specific injector line off, <coughs> and um, see if that causes your, you know, if that helps your problem. Uh, you can screw it in on the rail. Just um, make sure that you never crack open a high pressure fuel line on a common rail diesel with the engine turning starting running anything don't do it it it's way more than enough pressure to inject diesel under your skin that's very bad it gets in your bloodstream it causes massive problems don't do that never try to bleed a common rail Cummins you know on the 12 valves and the early 24 valves you could crack an injector line and wait till you get fuel you know spewing from that line and you could tighten that nut back up don't do that on a common rail. They're self-bleeding systems. That system is going to pressurize that rail all the way up. It's going to push the air out through the injector, and it's going to push it out the cylinder. It may take some time to turn it over. They say not to let your starter run for more than 20 seconds straight, but crank it over. It'll fire up. We'll go over all that when we get down to that time. So now, I have all my injectors. These were already engraved have all of them laid out in order and if I forget the order then I can go pick them back up so here is my new set of injectors and connector tubes like I said you could tell that they're engraved um, I engraved it there because that's where the the connector nut goes so the engraving should be safe there and if it's not whenever I remove them I'll just re-engrave them then I I uh, engrave there on that ear is where I do it on the injector so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to pull these caps off of here, off of the nozzle and the solenoid, and I'm going to put them on those injectors, and I'm going to put them back in these little white boxes, and then they're going to go back in this big dynamite diesel box. And when I get ready, I'm going to send them off and have them tested. Um, I went over yesterday, but they do send their injectors with a flow chart to show that they are a matching set. Um, each one of these colors is an injector and you really don't have a way of knowing which injector is which because they don't number them from di from dynamite but is what it is um, you could tell that all the numbers are pretty tight pretty close together at all your pressures this one's got a little blip right there where number three is 
a little bit off from the others. Um, I think that's number three. Yeah, it's number three. Uh, number three is off from the others, but it's fine. They really, this really comes in handy to send to your tuner, especially if you get like rebuilts or you send them off for repair because that lets you know that they're balanced and they're ready. And it also, the tuner can look at that and see what your, uh, what your popping, what your uh, cubic millimeters is per pressure. So they know how much fuel you're getting. Uh, that's a lot above my pay grade. I don't deal with that. So now, how do we put these in, you might be asking. Well, I will show you. First step is take these caps off. As I said yesterday, this is your inlet. That's where your connector tube goes. Fuel comes in here through the connector tube. This is your, um, your what is my word? Your relief. Um, this is where the excess fuel goes. This helps to cool the injector body. It only uses as much as it needs, and all the excess fuel goes back to the injection pump to get reused. That's why diesels are pretty inefficient. I mean, pretty efficient is they use all of the fuel that they send back well they use all the fuel that they need and they send back what they don't unless it's tuned where it's actually sending that through the injector nozzle into the cylinder any excess fuel just goes right back through the return line that's my word the return line on the back of the head goes back to the uh, injection pump and this is your solenoid right here be careful with these these studs strip out easily you don't want to do that you got to get a new top. Watch these little plastic dividers too. Um, I had one that broke off one time. And uh, they're not critical, but I like to have them in there just because it keeps uh, keeps the wires from crossing. You don't want to do that. Um, this is the nozzle. Make sure on all of the injectors that you pulled out, this copper washer right here comes off with it. Because if that stays down in there, you've got to get it out or you're not going to seat properly. Dynamites are really good. They've got a little... If you look at it, you can see they've got a little uh, teeth on it that hold it onto the nozzle. So you don't really ever have to worry about dynamite washers coming off. They usually stay on the injector. Um, this is the O-ring that seals it down in the bore. This goes into the bore and that right there, I say that this doesn't seal at the bore. This copper washer seals at the bore. This seals it into the injector well. And then notice this hold down clamp wobbles right here on this washer this washer is what pulls down and holds the injector into the bore notice this wobbles it's important to note when we go to tighten the injectors down we want to make sure that we keep this as even and as flat as possible um, even pressure is the best and also i downloaded the dynamite diesel installation instructions off of their website it's very easy to find and um it gives you step-by-step -step instructions for how to remove and replace the injectors. Remove, replace, install, all of that good stuff. Pretty in-depth. It's got pictures and stuff. Um, I just know how to do it, so the only thing that I have it for is uh, the torque specs, which are vital. So I've got an injector, and I've got a connector tube, and I'm going to show you all how to install the first injector. So, I didn't take but one rocker off. You'll find in the other video, I tell you how to take that one exhaust rocker off. Um, it's not that hard. You could take both of them off if you would like, but you don't have to. I'm going to move that bridge right to the side right there. These bridges, the last video mentions it. They have these little knurls right here. I always put those to the front. Helps you to remember which way they were when you, put, when you took them out. Take this injector body, rotate it where it'll slide down in that hole. It should fit like that. Now take this connector tube. These little balls go up, stick that down in the hole, and now let's go to the torque instructions. Alright, you're going to take the injector and you're going to push it in until you hear it snap. It should click. You got to get them lined up just right. Well, I'm trying to video it where y'all can hear it, but I might need both hands to do this. One thing that I forgot to mention as well, find that hole that the injector connector tube goes in. Make sure that it is pointing the correct direction. There's your injector tube. You want to line it up, make sure it's going the right direction. 
Make sure this connector tube isn't down in the bore as well. You don't want that in the way. And I'm going to see these suckers are hard. Get to snap right now because they're brand new. I've never had a brand new set of injectors that I've had to install. So these suckers are a lot harder to get in than the remand ones. Woo! That is a tight fit. I'll show you on the next one what it sounds like. Next, you take your connector tube here. Make sure the balls are faced up. You snap that in there. That clicks. Now, take your tube nut right here, and you're going to get it finger tight. Not very tight at all. This is the 15 16 Snug it up. Okay, that's finger tight. Now you're going to take your injector hold down bolts, which I have laid out up here. The left is the front, the right is the rear, just like it is on the injector. This is one, two, three, four, five, six cylinders. I always like to do that to make sure to keep them. They go back in the same hole because I just like the precision of knowing that. It's not that big of a deal, but it matters to me. We'll stick this in there. We're going to finger tighten these down to where they're at equal lengths. These are the ones that are 8 millimeter. But you're going to need your quarter inch torque wrench on. Man, I can't get a grip on that sucker. Covered in oil. Try to keep these as straight as possible in here. And you can kind of tell if you're straight or not. See how there's still some slack on there? That's how you want it. Now you're going to torque the tube nuts to 37 foot-pounds of torque. Pay attention because this is where it gets tricky. If I haven't said it already, you're going to want to watch the video all the way through before you start attempting this just because you may miss stuff along the way. And I don't want you to have your only vehicle, your only mode of transportation sitting in your shop and you find out that you need something that you don't have. So make sure you watch it all the way through. Make sure you have everything that you need for the process. I'm going to grab the half inch torque wrench here, set it to 37 foot pounds. Alright, we have it set on 37 foot pounds. Go around until it clicks. This torquing sequence is very important. It's critical to the install. Next, we're going to go over here to the other page on my instruction sheet because I have a cheat sheet since I'm video and can't look at my phone. Now we're going to torque the hold down bolts to 89 inch pounds. So you're going to want to make sure that um, you uh, tighten them down evenly as well. Alright, we got it set at 89 inch pounds. Remember that's like a seesaw, so tighten a little bit on one, tighten a little bit on the other, and usually once you get one that's tightened to torque, the other one will be as well since it is a seesaw. That's the way it works. There's torque. I'll check this one. There's torque. I like to go back and tighten the uh, connector tube downs, a l the connector tube nuts a little bit more. We're going to run up to, let's see, what are we at now? 37 foot pounds. We're going to run up to probably about 45. We'll run them up a little bit more. You don't want to tighten these down too much. But a little bit of extra torque is always recommended. If you're having problems with uh, fuel rail pressure loss, that could be an issue right there. Go back and retorque your connector tube nuts. Um, the best way to do that is to just loosen the injector and then um, basically do the process over again. You don't have to pull the injector out. You can technically go in and, and just put a torque wrench on the tube nuts and uh, make sure that they're tight and that they're at spec, but 
six one way, half a dozen the other. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other six of these inject or the other five of these injectors slipped in here and ready to roll, and then I'm gonna show y'all putting everything back together. I said I was gonna let y'all hear the click on them, and I am. Took a rag, that solenoid hurts if you use your bare hand. Take a rag and push it. Hear the snap? It takes some work to get it in there on some of these, but it will go. Now I can get the rest of these in here. All right, I'm back. So as you can see, I've already got all of the other exhaust rockers put in except for the front one. One thing to note, the connector nut in the rear is a real pain to get a torque wrench on, especially if you have a big, long, half-inch one like mine is. You just got to kind of run it up in here and get it over there. And you're probably only going to catch one tooth at a time on it. It sucks, but that's the way it is. Um, this right here on the top of this intake plate is your MAP sensor. Mass, better than mass, mass air pressure sensor. This right here is going to read how much boost you're making. Um, it gets in the way of this injector nut. You can pull it loose, but I just got an extension and ran an extension up to it. That's what I've always done and got past it. Um, and... One thing to note, if you took your push rods out at the beginning when you pulled your rockers out, because some people do it, I used to do it, make sure that you A, put the same push rod back in the same hole or that's going to mess you up, and B, when you drop it down in the hole, make sure it sits on the cam properly. Um, if the cam is turned sideways, sometimes it slides down beside the cam and you can feel, you can tell it's definitely dropped too far down. Um, go through and make sure all your bridges are turned the right direction before you put your rocker back on. But you'll take your rocker and uh, get it where it's lined up in the push rod, and then it'll hit over here on this rocker bridge. Take that nut and tighten it down. It's that 10 mil from uh, yesterday in the last video. Now they say uh, they actually have a a torque spec on these but I don't remember what it is I just go till it's snug not too far if you pulled both rockers out you will actually notice that the uh, hinges on here actually come up with them so you can actually take this whole assembly well I take that back sometimes the little the the hinges on the bottom where it rolls will stay behind and that's fine but you can pull both of these rockers out at the same time if you're pulling both of them out you don't have to, I don't. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of my high pressure fuel lines back on. And um, we can start getting this bad boy put back together to the point where we can start it. So um, I'm gonna start in the back just because that's what makes the most sense. That gum, I cannot talk today. And then I'm going to uh, show y'all the number one just so y'all can see. Um, also, make sure you don't drop anything down in this little hole right here where that push rod goes because that goes down to the cam and that would be a bad day. So, bear with me. Alright, so I have all but the number one injector line on. One thing to note, I started at the back so it brought it up really fast to my attention. One thing to remember is that lifting eye back there, mine is bent and if you watched in the first video you already know this but if you didn't, I'll tell you now, mine is bent and it gets in the way of that injector line bent from pulling the motor um that that stud right there on the right side is supposed to have that injector hold down clamp right there that's on the number six injector line i don't put it on there because it's a pain to get it on there and you can't even really get a nut on it and get anything to tighten it down after you get your number six injector line on if you start at the back put that lifting lug on and then put your number five line on regardless of the order that you go in make sure that you put that lug on before you do the number five injector line and that lug has to be off before you do the number six injector line so I mean starting at the back works just fine you do that you do the lug do five four three two and then we're gonna do one right here um, it's a three-quarter inch wrench I think it's technically metric but a three-quarter fits it the the manuals and everything say to tighten these down to 22 foot-pounds, I think is what it is. Which I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand. It's 22 foot-pounds. Um, I go till it's snug. Put one side on. 
Get a couple threads on it, put the other side on. Go ahead and get it tightened down. Now you may have noticed that I have not put my injector hold down bolts in yet. I know. I'm going to do that here in a second. I'm also going to go over a little bit of anatomy on these trucks as well. Another thing that can cause a fuel pressure drop, a fuel rail pressure drop, is the pressure relief valve itself could be weak. There's a spring in there. It's a relief valve. If you're familiar with plumbing or anything like that, then you know how a relief valve works. There's a spring and a plunger, and the spring is set to so many pounds, and once the, um, the pressure on one side of it exceeds that many pounds, then it relieves the pressure. Well, those pressure relief valves are notorious for going bad and becoming weak. Well, if your relief valve is weak, then it's going to relieve pressure prematurely. Now on mine, I took mine off and put a PPE racing plug in there instead of a pressure relief valve. A lot of guys don't recommend doing that. They say, hey, look, man, it's a relief valve for a reason. If you overpressurize the system, you want something to relieve it. I've been running that for years, knock on wood, haven't had any issues yet. Um, plug that map sensor back in too before I forget about it. Click. And then I've got injector hold down bolts I've got to do. But um, like I said, it, it could be your relief valve that's leaking by. That's honestly one of the easiest things to, to test. Pull this bolt off the top, crank the truck up and see if fuel collects at the top. That's the easiest way to tell. If fuel collects at the top, it means it's relieving pressure. Under normal conditions, you should never have to worry about um, it ever relieving pressure through the relief plug. Um, so if it's relieving pressure, then that means that it's probably weak. And I would recommend getting a new one or putting in a, a plug like I did. A lot of guys, like I said, they don't like the plugs. Well, it's got a plug, it's got a relief valve for a reason. If something goes haywire. Okay, you stick with that, and I'll stick with mine. So, anyway, I'm gonna put these hold down bolts back in. They're 10 millimeter. If you don't know from the first video, gotta try to remember that some of y'all may not have watched the first video. It's kind of weird splitting videos up like this, but the first one was already 30 minutes long because it had a pretty pretty good introduction into it. Um, and uh, this one's probably going to be quite a bit shorter because we're nearly done and ready to fire it up almost. If I can get these bolts to go in, they're a little bit of a pain sometimes, so I'm going to get these put in. Alright, now that the hold down bolts are on there, we can go ahead and um, put the grid heater, or I have a grid heater delete on here. It's my SB, it's a really simple little kit. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on there. My dipstick tube is bent, so get that out of the way. Roll this back. Um, I'm going to have to put the delete on the, put the block on the intake horn and then set it down because S and D, this bolt does not just come out, um, doesn't come out with the heater on it or the block because uh, the hole is too tight, so there's no tolerance. So I'm going to go ahead and get that in, get those bolts down. Alright, the intake horn is back in. Tighten this clamp up. Um, before I forget it, those are, will be 10 millimeter on the uh, stock intake horn. And like I said in the takedown video, if you have a grid heater, you're going to have a wire that connects to one of these bolts on the um, intake plate. And, um, Now we're ready to put the valve, the rocker box back on. Um, we'll connect the injectors up. Once that's done, we can crank it, make sure everything runs right, and then we can go ahead and put the finished touches on it. So on the bottom of this rocker box, there is a gasket that runs around here. Mine's looking a little flat, so it's probably getting about time to replace it. Um, you can order those gaskets and replace them. If you have issues with the wiring, this is the bottom side. You see all these wires that run through here and go to the injectors. This is your bank plug, and this goes back and it feeds. Uh, this is the front, so it feeds the front two injectors. Flip this baby over. I think you can buy standalone wiring harnesses for them, but a lot of guys just buy the whole rack with the wires already in them. 
You can see all my wires from the takedown video, as I mentioned. You can see all my wires are still spread out, so I know which one they go on. And then we can get this bad boy stuck in there. And uh, there's a bolt at each end, and then there's one, two, three, four, five bolts across the top. 10 millimeter, torque them down to snug, not ugga duggas. Don't go crazy tight with it, or you're going to ruin something. And keep in mind as well, there's that small tube there for the uh, crank for the crankcase breather, and then there's that larger one I have rolled back. Do not get those underneath this or the valve cover, because I have done that, caused a big oil leak, and um, crushed the end of the tube, and I had to cut it off and do some rigging to get it to work properly and get it to seal off so that's what's holding me up right there's that clamp this fits down in there you can look along the side and make sure everything's lined up on the sides slap those 10 mil babies in there and we'll be good to go for the next step all right one thing to remember about the rocker box bolts there are two different lengths of bolts there are going to be five of them that are long and two of them that are short the two short ones go on the ends if you didn't remember pulling them out so i have all but the number two are tied in here put those on if you think you have these two loose leave them because i guarantee you they're tight enough it does not take much to break these off on these injectors make sure you put them back with the wires on the ones that they were on before i'm pretty sure i'm not going to be held liable for accidents but i'm fairly certain that it does not matter which post these go on as long as they're all on the same post because it should just be a simple solenoid but i'm not going to be responsible for damages if you try that and it doesn't work it kills your injectors so then we're going to plug in our banks right here there's the first bank here's the third bank if i can get it to stretch back there in the back somewhere there it is right there hanging right there is the third bank that's gonna go there and we're ready to crank the engine up so let me get the tools that are at risk of falling down into something that they don't need to fall down into let's set them down here on the bumper somewhere out of the way these can stay here I know those papers are gonna go flying All right, so we've made sure that everything's hooked up. Everything's in its proper place. Now, there's a couple guys that, that say that you can turn the key on, let the lift pump run for a while, and it'll pressure it up. It's not gonna pressure up past the injection pump. So you can let it prime as much as you want to, but it's not gonna go past the injection pump. So we're gonna crank it over for a little bit. Stop, let the starter rest for a second. Crank it over again. And we have a running engine. And she let out a puff of smoke. Thumping through the box. 
It sounds fine. So we're going to let it run for a minute and call it good. Um, the next steps are really simple. You're going to go ahead and put your uh, valve cover back on, which i got to adjust that gasket's coming loose right there. And then we're going to put the plastic shroud back on it. In the meantime, I'm going to go eat lunch. All right, guys. As you can tell, I got the uh, valve cover back on here. <clears throat> I decided while I was eating lunch that I wanted to go ahead and do the, the valve lash as well. Um, I didn't video that process for you. Because really, I honestly hate doing valve lash. And so, really no other reason other than that. But, um... When you tighten down those six bolts on the valve cover, do not over tighten them or you will strip them. They thread down into that aluminum rocker box and they will strip out. I've already had to helicoil one of these bolt holes before, a long time ago. Um, I'm going to pull these four bolts out here and I'm going to put the valance back on top of this valve cover. It's a valve cover cover, so whatever you want to call that. It's kind of like a valance or a cowl or something like that. Um, and then make sure you put your tubes back on for your breather box. Also, whenever you put this on, I had mentioned it in the first video yesterday, but it bears reminding. Make sure when you put this valve cover back on, you check the gasket, make sure it's all in there good. And make sure that that tube or nothing gets underneath it when you go to tighten it down because you will not get a good seal and if you have crank crankcase pressure honestly even just driving the truck and the oil moving around in there you will lose a lot of oil out of here here's my valance you have to take the oil cap off if you still have a knob on yours but there's that get it set down on there don't over tighten these bolts either these four 10 millimeter bolts and that's all there is to reinstalling injectors I'm going to put the caps on the solenoids and the nozzles on the other set of injectors I'm going to box them up and label them by injector number call it a day I think I'm also going to try to get my high idle activated while I'm messing around with this thing today um, I had a uh, Firepunk Diesel does my tuning, which I went back and they're also the ones that recommended um, adding the extra torque on the connector tubes um, when I was going back and forth with them one time about injectors. And um, very reputable company. If you know anything about diesels, you know about Firepunk Diesel. Um, and, uh, they do my tuning, and they had turned on the high idle feature in the tuning, however, still wasn't working, so, um, I've heard several things about grounding out pin 22 on the ECM, and, um, somebody else, actually, somebody on Facebook group gave me the part number to do that, so I got a part number and ordered a Cummins, it's actually a repair pin is what it is for the ECM, but it uh, comes out and has a, a butt connector on it, I should, and um, that way I can just stick that in pin 22 and um, I can tie in something to it to ground it out. We're going to see if that activates the high idle. So. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Have fun with it. Don't hate in the comments. Um, and if you need anything, let me know, and I will help you as best I can. Overall, I would say to probably block out about three to four hours for this um, to remove and install. Um, took me longer this time to do it because I was videoing, and that takes up some time. But... Normally it doesn't take me a whole long time to do this. It's, it's an involved process, but it's nothing that you can't do yourself. I would recommend doing your valve lash while you're in there. But don't look for me for a video to do it, because that's a very annoying process in my opinion, and I don't like doing it. So, 
you all be good or be good at it. I am out.